and I'm happy to tell you that more than 40 navies in the world, including all the leading navies, whether it's the US, the British, the French, the Japanese, the Australian, uh, exercise with the Indian Navy. So we have, the Indian Navy does bilateral and multilateral exercises with over 40 other world navies in our waters, which means that they want to come and exercise with us more often than we may want to go and exercise with them. So this, I think, is a good measure of understanding what a high, rep, good reputation the Indian Navy has in the world. Uh, insofar as the submarines go, now, while you still see a ship, you will very rarely see a submarine because the submarine is underwater. And submarine, the submarine arm is a very specialized arm. Uh, submarines as such are very specialized vessels. They're quite different from ships. And therefore, one has to undergo special training to become a submariner. Uh, first thing, the most important thing is that to join the, joining the submarine arm is entirely voluntary. Nobody can be forced to join it because it, offer, it, is a, it probably is a, it requires a little more, uh, you know, more high level of physical fitness, a deeper level of commitment. So you cannot force anyone to become a submariner. But uh, notwithstanding the fact that it is a voluntary arm, we generally get more volunteers every year than we have vacancies. Therefore, very often we have to even sometimes refuse people who are keen to join the submarine arm saying we can only take so many people this year into the arm. So you may try another year next year. So that is a feature of the submarine arm. And at any time, if one wants to leave the submarine arm, one is, one is allowed to leave the submarine arm and go back into the normal Navy. But to give you an indication, in my 30 years in the submarine arm, I only know of two officers who left. And they left not because they were unhappy with the arm, but because they were very claustrophobic. So they found that they were finding it very difficult to operate for many, many days underwater in a closed steel, steel cylinder. They were feeling suffocated. And then I think it was important that they leave because there was no point trying to be unhappy in an environment in which you are supposed to operate for the rest of your life. But otherwise, once a person joins the submarine arm, he does not generally leave it. He stays there right till the end, till he retires. And that, I think, speaks very highly of the quality of submariners who join and the kind of professional satisfaction this very tough environment gives, which means that people are so happy professionally, they feel they're doing something meaningful that they don't leave. Now, coming to how do you join the arm? Well, after you join the Navy, which is through the NDA or directly through Naval Academy or uh, after a university entry scheme, we have a university entry scheme where you can do your graduation and then join as in the engineering and electrical branches of the Navy. Uh, once you've joined the Navy, that is a choice you have to make before you uh, enter a training academy. Then you, then on getting commissioned, uh, as, a, as now it's a lieutenant, every naval officer has to undergo one year's courses. You go to every naval training establishment and learn something about what happens there. For example, you will go into five weeks in the gunnery school to understand how do the naval guns work? How do naval missiles work? What is the concept of operation? How are they used in what? Then you will go to the communication school. There they will teach you how naval communications are used. So similarly, you go to every school that the Navy has, every training establishment for short capsule courses of four to eight weeks to understand so that by the end of it, when an officer is posted to a ship, he has a fairly good understanding of what, the sh what is happening on board. He understands what the communicator is doing. He understands what the navigator is doing. He understands what the engineer is doing. He understands what the electrical officer is doing. So that is very important. And that is why this one year courses are done. Once you finish this, these courses after one year, then you can volunteer for any of the arm. You can volunteer for the submarine arm. You can volunteer for the aviation arm and become a naval pilot or an observer. Or you can become a diver, a deep sea diver, which is also very tough. Which are, you know, you've heard of something called the Marine Commandos, Marcos. They are the ones who become the Marine Commandos subsequently with further training. But all these three arms are voluntary. If you choose not to do any of the join any of these three, you just go into the normal Navy and become a normal surface warfare officer on a surface ship, which is an equally important job to do. Then you get posted to one from one ship to another ship. So uh, submarine arm, aviation arm, and the diver diving branch are voluntary arms. Coming back to submarines. Once you've joined the submarines, uh, once you've volunteered for it and you've undergone the medical. Now, the medical is a little more strict because first thing you have to be seen whether you can withstand pressure. Because in a submarine, under normal circumstances, while uh, it, is, it is like an aircraft, when you are sitting in normal and there's no problem, then it feels like normal air. It's pressurized. However, if there is an emergency, if there is a problem and the submarine loses pressure, then the outside pressure of the water will start acting on the submarine and the people inside. So you are able to withstand that pressure. So one has to go through a pressure chamber in the, in the naval hospital and uh, various tests are done over there. Then there are some psychological tests to be done also, basically to see whether you have the mental ability to, to sort of sustain yourself in that environment. And once you've cleared, and these are not difficult. These are just, they want to see that you're not unfit for it. It doesn't mean that you're weaker than anybody else, or you're not up to the mark, or you're not fit. Some people are claustrophobic, they're claustrophobic. Some people are not happy that in that environment, they're not happy in that environment. It's not a disqualification of any kind, that you are not up to the mark. It is just that 
you should be suited for that environment basically once you've joined the submarine arm or you volunteered and you've been selected for it one has to go for a 6 7 month course to ins satwana ins satwana is a naval establishment in visakhapatnam on the east coast of india which is the submarine warfare school where submarine training is imparted to those who volunteer for the arm and subsequently when people go for courses also they go to satwana in satwana in these 7 months besides learning the theoretical parts of a submarine everything that's a theory of a submarine the systems etc you also have to undergo something called an escape training course which is of 4 weeks duration one month now this is another tough course because they teach you how to escape from a submarine that may have sunk under water so you have to operate under conditions of it could be dark you could be injured many things could have happened and you are under pressure now if you are at 100 let's say you have sunk your submarine has sunk at 100 meters depth that means the moment you leave the submarine even if it is pressurized you will be subjected to 10 kg per centimeter square pressure if it is deeper that much more so you have to learn to escape from that so there are various drills and there are various procedures it is not that these are difficult or they are impossible it's just that they make you practice these so much that they become natural to you because when you are trying to escape from a submarine that is sunk there is no time to start thinking what did they teach me what should i do now it should come naturally to you that i am supposed to do this 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 everybody on board the submarine has an escape suit he wears an escape suit and then he carries out the escape drill so it is very important to clear the escape training course if you cannot clear the escape training course then you cannot become a submariner that's that's uh, sort of the bottom line once you finish these 7 months uh, in ins satwana then every officer who has done the course or sailor also for that matter is posted to a submarine for further training so you go three or four you know the course is divided amongst as many submarines as there are operation operation submarines there are and let's say there are five operation submarines there are 20 officers they will send four to each submarine for training this seven months again you will spend six to seven months there and it's pretty intensive training you go and join every department on board that the officer specialized officers are there to to take you through the paces to teach you things to help you understand the practical aspects of submarining you are given an opportunity to operate equipment under supervision so basically you are now being taught the practical aspects of submarining once you finish these 6 months on board then you have to go to then you have to undergo a board a board of officers which includes about four or five senior submarine officers will ask you various questions on submarining what have you learned they'll give you they'll give you situations that suppose some so and so thing happens what will you do suppose so and so thing happens what will you do it's an interview basically but basically but very mm-hmm. submarine oriented to understand that have you you're not expected to be a genius you're not expected to be able to answer everything 100% the intention there is to find out have you understood enough have you understood the fundamental concept of submarine operations to be able to continue in the submarines thereafter so that is what happens at the end of these this one year you are now qualified to call yourself a submarine and you get the submarine badge now it's like a flying badge like a pilot does his training and wears wings a submariner wears dolphins i don't have the dolphins here but i'll get the next time so uh, that is a badge we are all very proud of wearing because that means that you have passed through this one year successfully and you are qualified to be a submariner now you are a full fledged submariner but still there is a certain amount of training you still have to do which means that now you have to be trained now that you have understood how a submarine works in theory and in practice now you have to be able to operate that submarine independently when you are on watch that means you don't need to be supervised by anybody <laughs> underwater so for that you need uh, to undergo something called dived watch keeping it's called a dived watch keeping certificate which means that after you get the dived watch keeping certificate you can do a watch what we call a watch means an officer of on duty underwater when the submarine is underwater so this takes another 6 to 7 months uh, again you you are given supervision and you're given independent time to learn on your own you are expected to start like doing things on your own once all that is over then at the end of that 6 months again there is a board and you get months to become now a full fledged submariner who can do anything he is expected to do on a submarine he or she as there are no ladies at the moment so at the moment is only he he is expected to do on a submarine so now that you have become a full fledged submariner now you will be transferred to various submarines for you know you will be a navigating assistant navigating officer or an assistant weapon officer or an assistant sonar officer so depending on whatever whatever job there is a, a young officer is posted to uh, could be one submarine could be one after another two or three submarines till the officer goes for his specialization now specialization in the navy there are four specializations there is communication navigation gunnery and anti submarine warfare submariners go for all four in the good old days we never went for gunnery because there was no gun on board but now that submarines can also fire missiles mm-hmm. uh, submariners also go for the gunnery course this course is one year you do it along with your counterparts from the surface navy who also come for these courses and you are on par with everybody else you 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 do exactly what they are doing it's not separate it's not different it's not course mate who has come from the surface navy will do at the end of this one year then you go back to submarines 
as a specialized officer then you will be the navigating officer if you are specialized in navigation you will be the torpedo officer if you are specialized in anti submarine warfare you will be the communication officer if you are specialized in communication that means for that particular department on board you are solely responsible to the captain of the submarine and to ensure that in any eventuality you know exactly what you are supposed to do you are able to take charge of that department and do it do it to the best of your ability so these we call them specialist tenures because you've specialized in come so this could be another two or three years you're doing this on various submarines after which then the next step that in the submarine you do is something called a pco course a principal control officer which means that now you're in a position you've done your specialization you've seen how the other specializations work now you take over as a executive officer of a submarine an executive officer means the second in command that means in a control room of the submarine and if the captain is not present the commanding officer you should be able to command the submarine you should be good enough to be able to take all the decisions that a commanding officer would have taken had he been present he may be in his cabin he can't be there 24 hours 7 days of the week so he may be in his cabin but he has and he is confident in his cabin because he knows he's got an exo who can take these decisions on his behalf so once this once you do this principal control officer's course which is uh, which is not a very difficult course but it's a very professional course then you get tra transferred to a submarine as a second in command as the executive officer second in command in the navy is called an executive officer this you one is an executive officer for one or two years till one then get selected to do uh, what we call the submarine commanding officers qualifying course coqc commanding officers qualifying course this is perhaps one of the toughest professional courses in the navy and in a very in a very colloquial sense in many navies this they call this a perisher course because they say so many people fail that many people so they say many people perish in this course so it's called a perisher course so this is probably one of the toughest courses there are no second chances if you fail it once you will not be called back again because then it is felt you are not fit enough to take over the as commanding officer of a submarine mm -hmm. and you can imagine how tough it is because here is everybody who comes to this course has spent 10 to 12 years on a submarine before that he's been an exo he's been a specialist officer he's been a watch keeping officer and despite that if he fails it means that obviously he was not good enough to become the captain of a submarine so only those who qualify the submarine coqc they are after are made commanding officers of submarines if by some chance you don't qualify the pco's course or you don't qualify the coqc course it is not considered normal surface navy and continue with your career the way you, you would have otherwise it's just that your 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 for further service you will not be able to serve in submarines after so because if you're not qualified commanding officer course once you once your people have become commanding officer there's no job for you really on board so that is what that is as far as the from 12 to 18 months to as long as the navy think you should be in command like i commanded four submarines so i was actually in command for five and a half years of a submarine 